I played 200 days of Stardew Valley Mega Expanded. We're back for another full year packed full of adventures and surprises. If you haven't seen the first year yet, please go check that out first, you don't want to miss a thing. I can't wait to share everything that happened with you in my second year of playing through all of these mods. But before we begin, I want to let you know that this video is being sponsored by HelloFresh. Take the stress out of good home-cooked food with easy, pre-portioned meal kits delivered right to your doorstep. There are tons of recipes to choose from every week, with something to fit all occasions, lifestyles and preferences. And they change up every week for that sweet bit of variety. We've been loving HelloFresh in the Lucian's household because it gives us more time to work on fun things like this video. It's as good as having a real chef prepare it, except it's up to 25% less expensive than takeout and up to 70% cheaper than eating at a restaurant. So you can still enjoy all the nice things, even in this economy. If you're picky like me about groceries, don't even worry. HelloFresh uses seasonal ingredients that travel from the farm to your home in less than seven days. I mean, it's literally got the word fresh in the name. To get a very special discount on your order, just click my link in the description and enter my code at checkout. Bon appetit! And now, on with the video. On day 113, Kent stopped by to introduce himself, and following close behind was Kimpoi. Don't these people know the first day of the year is wildly busy? But hey, I guess at some point I'll check out the new saplings at Nightingale Orchard. It's a satisfying start to my second year because we got to slash through all this fibre. Then I planted the strawberry seeds I made last year with a few shrub seeds to grow for some salal berries. I tidied up the new debris whilst waiting for Pierre's to open and remembered to let the animals back out. I even set up a space for the rice shoots I accumulated. When I headed out for seeds, I got this cutscene with Lenny, Richard and someone new? Naomi? Who are you? Seems like something happened on the journey here that got her suit covered in stains. This is actually Shiro and Yuma's mother, but their father had to stay behind to work so she came back alone. I wonder if we'll ever meet him. I accompanied them all back to Ridgeside where Shiro was having a physical therapy session, but as soon as Yuma heard his mum's voice, he came running. This family is now reunited. Well, mostly. Before I even had the chance to get into Pierre's, Lewis asked me if I wanted to take over this community garden, and I wasn't saying no to more free land. Then it was time to buy our seeds. This year, I'm buying about a sprinkler or so of each crop to save some for cooking ingredients. Then for the rest of the farm, I needed a trip to see Sandy because rhubarb was going to be my moneymaker this spring. Before I planted my seeds, I wanted to handle a birthday first, but on my way past I met Brile, another ridgeside villager returning to the valley. I'm not sure I like him though because he was causing Faye absolute grief. Moving right along, I gave Torts a dinosaur egg for his birthday, receiving his most handsome smile yet. Then I stopped procrastinating and got to planting because I had hundreds of seeds to deal with, but I didn't seem to buy enough to fill out the bottom row of sprinklers, so I had to spend the rest of my money to finish it. Thankfully, I just sold 65 grams worth of tea saplings so I wouldn't be absolutely broke on day 114, which is when I found Naomi on my doorstep to tell me the hotel expansion was now complete. I had no idea it was even going to expand, but we'll be sure to check it out, at some point, when we remember, or when we go in there by accident. Ideen sent me some blue jazz seeds in the mail, which I don't have room for, so I ignored those seeds and collected all of my wine. I delivered a leak to Harvey, which he asked for yesterday because I was interested in the friendship points, then finally stepped into Grandpa's shed because I forgot you have to go inside to trigger the quest from Robin to restore it. I chopped some wood in Cindersat Forest before adding another set of paths here, then I spent the rest of the night in the mine smushing bugs because I had a quest to craft 20 bug steaks, which I accepted last year. After giving Luna a peach for her birthday, the bug slaying continued into day 115, and I got everything I needed before even hitting midday. I took them straight over to the box under the Water Research Centre and wanted to collect my reward but it disappeared from my journal. I hope I haven't done that all for free. Unbelievable. And speaking of unbelievable, I fished the rest of this day away. I had another doorstep visitor on day 116. It was Robin this time asking me to come and look at the shed with her. She can refurbish it for me. All I have to do is drop off a hefty amount of materials for it. Maddie sent me 10 grand in the mail for those bug steaks, so it was definitely worth my while. And I got a mini fridge in the mail from Gus, so I guess I must have helped with an omelette at some point. Ken got a blackberry for his birthday because I didn't have anything better. Then I dropped off some sunfish to a box in East Scott for a stray cat. I'm not sure if you guessed yet who we're going to want to date for this playthrough, but I picked Luna. She then told me about her sister hating seaweed. Looks like we still have to meet the family. I carried on with my questing by giving Trini a poppy and a pink cake for a couple of her requests, being careful not to give the items to the wrong person, and then I spent some of the evening in Ridgeside foraging so that I can have some Iridium quality gifts to hand. I actually remembered to check out the hotel expansion on my way past, and I'm not sure if it was just the cafe which was closed when I got there, or if it was also this enormous room. With the expansion now seen, I made my way out to forage by the Ridge Forest and head to bed. 
On day 117, I harvested my garlic and my parsnips with my scythe. Yep, I installed a harvest with scythe mod, because eventually we're going to have so much land to manage. Plus, it's just really satisfying. I replanted those spots with forage seeds for tea saplings and bought a battery from the travelling cart before crafting the last two sprinklers I needed to finish this field. From there, it was up to Ridgeside Village with some grapes for Alyssa's birthday, which meant I got a cutscene with her where I accidentally caught her singing. Apparently she's meant to be a good singer, but I play with the music off so I'm not really sure if you hear anything in this cutscene. She was however extremely embarrassed, she apologised and ran away. I don't have time to chase after her though because I was still clearing my journal. I made a survival burger for Yuma, chucked a cave carrot on Marnie's floor, handed some Mia to Pika he asked for like a year ago, then gave Yuma an iron bar and that survival burger. It's been a lot of running around today. I witnessed Carmen get told off by Geo for trespassing on his property, but she seemed to want to eat Kiwi who immediately ran away. I ran away too because I wanted to see what was beyond this log. This is the entrance to the Ridge Forest, an area full of secrets and very likely death. Or if you're me, panic and certain death. <gasps> what the heck is that? <sighs> oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Absolutely not. <laughs> no! Yeah! Oh my god, how do I get out of here? Damn it! Via the hospital, I guess, but thankfully I didn't lose anything too upsetting. On day 118, I visited Luna at her home where she wanted help to restore the interior. I had the option to ask Robin for extra help, but I decided I just wanted to spend this morning with the two of us. The place is looking much more livable now. Cozy, even. I caught a dewdrop fish before exiting the area, then I found Alyssa in town who apologised for running away yesterday. I told her I liked her singing, so she invited me to listen to her song when it's done. But then when we tried to go our separate ways, we kept bumping into each other. Awkward. Oh god, I hate it. Emily got the apricot she wrote to me about, and I gave her a topaz there and then to complete that friendship. Continuing with the journal clearing, I delivered an old tuna to Olga which she seemed to think was fresh, and I wasn't going to tell her. My next stop was to the mountain summit, and on my way I dropped Susan off an ice cream, then I grabbed the new season's forage up there. On day 119, I wished for people to stop showing up at my front door at 6am. Seriously, what is going on? I need my coffee before I socialise. Turns out, Grandpa was kind to Lorenzo's family when they were new here, so he wanted to repay that kindness with some gifts. He gave me some deluxe speed grow, some spaghetti to fuel the farm work, some gold to spend, and a lucky charm given to them by my grandpa. After he left, I tried to see what I do with this charm. I tried to wear it, but no luck there. Let me know in the comments if this does anything. Once I sold off a batch of caviar, I harvested my kale and my rice. Then I put most of the kale in the kegs to make juice. The travelling merchant brought me another battery this week, but nothing else for the community centre, which, as a reminder, I just need the apples and a rabbit's foot to complete the entire thing. I rode over to Lewis with a hot pepper for his birthday, then kept this first Sunday of the year strong by remembering to trade my jays with staircases, whilst also remembering to bring a flower for Sandy. I grabbed all the desert forage before I left and made sure to share some with Pam for getting me to and from the desert in one piece. Back on the farm, I set up those last two sprinklers with some more forage seeds and used the evening to chop down any new trees invading my property. Day 120 and can I please just step outside without someone waiting here, especially if you're a fire risk. It's way too early for this. On this day, I'd actually installed the part of the community mod to get passive friendship points because of the sheer number of NPCs we have, but judging by all these recipes I got in the mail, it seems to have caused an unexpected jump in the friendship points I already had. This felt OP and I ended up removing it from my game at some point in the next few game days. I galloped up to Ridgeside Village with Prizzy for an onslaught of cutscenes. The first was at Pika's where I helped him to unpack a delivery since he was all alone, then I walked into a conversation in town about a sketchy corporation nabbing buildings. It looks like Jojo is also wanting to build a branch up here too. Lenny is reluctant, but unless I understand this wrong, Maeve thinks it might even be a good thing. She's still not gaining any points from me, but then she wanted to take a walk with me to talk about the farm my grandfather left to me. Sounds like she's got her doubts about how well I'll do with the farm. Desk worker? How dare she? She has no right to be eyeing up my land. She's got high expectations. Maeve, I don't answer to you. Have you even seen the farm this year? I have no intention of letting anyone down. Whilst writing this script, I was trying to figure out why I went up to Ridgeside then left again, but past me has left a very helpful note. I went to buy tree saplings from Kimpoi and forgot, so back I went and bought one of everything. On returning to town, I got another cutscene, this time with Sandy visiting the valley, so we took her to see everything the town has to offer. 
I chatted to everyone I passed to see how the friendship mod worked, and as you can see by all the happy faces, anyone who witnessed the conversation gains friendship points too. I took a detour to the summit to grab all the new forage there on my way home where I planted all those trees in the dark to make an orchard. Overnight, the crop fairy paid a visit to grow up some of my rhubarb, but I'll be ignoring that because I want to harvest all of it at the same time. However, I did harvest my strawberries the next morning. When I took my trip up to Ridgeside for the day, I got a cutscene in the general store where I witnessed a family argument about how Anton was working. It was kind of awkward when they realised I witnessed the entire thing. I was here to give Anton a birthday gift, so I headed upstairs where I got a cutscene with Kiara who was looking stressed. She was struggling to pick a wallpaper for a client, so I helped her pick by choosing the mythical flower one, which is the pattern in the middle. A magical vibe. I handed off the birthday forage to Anton, then took the cable car back down to kill more bugs in the mines because I had another quest for bug steaks for someone else. What's with this weird obsession? Since I was using the monster musk I switched out to dust sprites once I was done with the bug meat because I might as well use it to farm coal for the rest of the day. On day 122, I had some starfruit ready which I replanted with some coffee since I got some from the mines the night before. Vincent got a sand dollar for his birthday, then I dropped off those bug steaks to the stray cat's box over in East Scarp. Whilst I was over this way, I visited Lexi with a daffodil, then I did try to meet the stray cat, but the glare she gave me burned, so I left her alone. I wanted to chop trees in Cindersat Forest, but then Luna walked straight over to me and demanded a cuddle. Aww. I joined Jodie and her family for some crispy floor fish for dinner, then I resumed the tree trapping for the night so I could ship off 113 tea saplings, which meant we made over 60,000 gold. On day 123, I accidentally destroyed some of the rhubarb when intending to harvest my green bean. Whatever, it's only one. I harvested a few coffee beans from the field, so I used these to fill up one of the sprinklers in the greenhouse so I'll have a supply at any time of year. I collected my juice and started off some strawberry wine, then visited Ridgeside's hotel to give Isabel a birthday gift which completed her friendship. Much of today was taking it slow, chatting to villagers and handing out gifts. Then I rounded this day off by making more cheese and mayo. Day 124 began with a forage harvest and I seem to have forgotten about using the scythe. I replanted it with more forage, then it was up to Ridgeside Valley again because we had another birthday, and this time it was Ezekiel's. I got him a foraged flower. They seem to love these around here. I popped over to Marnie's to get a couple of pigs and their names will be Kristoff and Olaf. Then it was all the way up to Robin's where I found Sebastian working on his motorbike and got the recipes for the drum and flute blocks, but she also gave me the shopping list of materials for the shed and we have some work to do. The reason I was really here was just meant to be a quick stop off to buy the rest of the crafting recipes on my way up to the mines to kill skeletons till pass out time. On day 125 I had a few crops to harvest, some of which went straight into kegs. This was egg hunt day, and the first thing I did was buy strawberries. 100 of them. But these would just be safe for next year so I can take advantage of them for an entire season. I took a bit of time to check out the extra section added by the Ridgeside Village mod that I missed last year, and there's even an egg stall which is absolutely adorable. Once I drained my social battery talking to every single NPC, I raced around town to nab as many eggs as I could, and at 10 eggs it wasn't my best performance, but still enough for the win. I'll take that thousand gold, thank you. That's basically 10 strawberry seeds for free. Day 126 was rhubarb day, and I was so excited to get all of this harvested. I also got my first salal berries, so I started turning loads back into seeds because these berries can be pretty good money makers, so I want to have a good amount of these ready for next year. I filled the top rows empty spots with forage seeds, then I took a break from the farming to handle the day's birthdays. When I got to the mansion, I got a cutscene with Arya, who seemed to be studying. It's pretty much all I've ever seen her do, so when she told me to leave, I just said for her to maybe not be so hard on herself. I also had a cutscene with Louis where I got sidetracked becoming his butler for a while because he couldn't find Sunny anywhere. I agreed to stay because I wanted to know if there was more to this kid than there seemed to be, and he ended up showing me his plant collection, all of which were named. I gave Madame Maeve a golden pumpkin for her birthday, and when I went downstairs I got another cutscene in this freaking mansion, and look, there's someone new. Not more friends. And the handshake introduction ended up going super weird. Please don't comment on my hands. I'm probably going to be avoiding this guy for a while. I finally got out of that place and escaped to the desert where I traded for a few staircases and bought the next load of rhubarb seeds. But I didn't go back to the farm without delivering Haley her birthday sunflower. I got all the seeds planted that evening, but they weren't enough so I had to walk back to the desert to get more, still managing to plant them before bed. On day 127, I set up more sprinklers in the greenhouse because I decided to plant some of the shrub seeds in here, given that getting more ancient seeds will be taking a while. 
Olivia got some wine for her birthday. Then I made a start on foraging for salmon berry season now that I have access to Iridian quality ones. And I took home 174 of them at the end of the day. On day 128, I dealt with yet another Ridgeside birthday, which meant I got a cutscene with the kids on my way back down to town. Something about them wanting to visit the farm, but I wasn't really listening because I just wanted to get back to salmon berry picking. I also made sure to stop by the summit to grab all the forage there too. On day 129, I dealt with the morning's farm chores and delivered Philip a birthday gift before getting right back to those salmon berries. I wanted myself set up with some basic food for the year. When I got back to the farm, I collected everything for the kegs while starting off some rhubarb wine. I wanted to stop in at the saloon to take a break from all the running around, but I walked in to find an intoxicated Philip who seemed to be really upset about a comic he reads, and I had to escort him outside to Chunder. Not really how I planned to spend my evening. I even had to help him back to the hotel. That's gonna be one heck of a hangover. I made my way back to the saloon because I still needed to drop off gems for Emily's rock rejuvenation quest. Then it was back home for the night. Hopefully I can get the smell of vomit off of me. Day 130 and oh god it's you. I have no idea how Philip managed to get down here at 6am after last night. I listened to his apology and his thank you, then harvested my salal berries and my coffee. Pam got a predictable parsnip for her birthday, then it was up to Ridgeside Village for another one where I got a whole diamond from the trash. Who is throwing away a diamond? When I entered the hotel, I found Anton trying to have a nap in the lobby, when Richard and Maeve came downstairs talking about the facilities. Anton hid behind this bear statue for some reason, look at his face! I successfully distracted them both, and after they left I asked him why he was hiding from the madame. Turns out the Amethines hired him when he used to be an architect, and due to his excitement and some other circumstances, he didn't plan the place very well and the building he was working on wouldn't have withstood an earthquake, so they could very well have gotten hurt and he would have been the one responsible. He was doing all of this work for his wedding, but he kept wanting to postpone it because of the project and neglected his fiancée, so she left him. So basically, he is avoiding the Amethines out of embarrassment. Anyway, I gave Naomi some forage for her birthday, and I honestly remember at the time thinking to myself, who even is this person? It's easy to forget when there are so many NPCs. It was then back to the valley to make use of the last day of salmonberry season, and since it was raining, on my travels I also picked up a mermaid's pendant which I took straight over to Luna who agreed to marry me. I stopped in at the wizards on my way past where he showed me how to change my appearance, but he also said something about some trouble with ancient magic on Luna? Huh? Apparently it's none of my concern, except I am about to marry her. I did explain my intentions to him, so he told me to look after her, then kicked me out as usual. I carried on with the berry picking on my way to the Adventurers Guild where I sold off an abundance of bone swords from the recent skeleton massacre, but by the end of the salmon berry season, I had over 500 iridium quality salmon berries, so we're going to be set for a long time. On day 131, I harvested the newest batch of forage before adding some paths by some of the secret entrances so I can find them easily when I want them. The area by the warp stone got super messy, so I took a minute to clean that up, then found a secret path that allows me to fix up this bit of path from last year so now I can actually join it with the steps. This looks so much better. This path also goes through to the other side which is actually a shortcut to the bus tunnel. This makes filling the area with kegs even more enticing. A void chick hatched in the coop today, and even though it's clearly not a duck, I named it Scrooge and gave it a little pet. I checked the travelling cart hoping for an apple, but I was delighted to find five batteries instead. I snapped up every single one of them, then used one of these other secret paths to finish off the south path for the farm, so now we're completely linked up at the bottom too. For my last stop of the day, I took a nighttime hike to the summit to enjoy the view and collect all the forage. On day 132, I forgot to record till I was about to sleep, so we'll recap what I did tomorrow. Oh geez, indeed. Day 133 was mine and Luna's wedding. We celebrated a beautiful morning in town, then Naomi came to the farm to collect us for the wedding reception I'd booked. I adore the way the Log Cabin Hotel was decorated, even if I maybe wouldn't have chosen the massive red carpet, but the main thing making me internally panic is that our table was up on a stage and everyone here was just staring at us. Please everyone, come and dance. It's a silent disco, okay? Well, I mean, no, there aren't any headphones. You just have to imagine the music. That way you only get to hear the songs you like, right? Somehow, we did all of that even before 6am, so I didn't miss out on any time for my farm chores. And it meant I could give my wife a freshly picked strawberry to welcome her to farm life. Seems she's already made herself at home because she's put up a fence that's made my horse completely inaccessible. Here's the area I set up the day before to house more crops. I haven't planned what to do with this corner down here, but along the top, I'll have a couple of sheds. 
The travelling cart brought another battery today. She knows how to get my business. Then I wanted to go up to Robin's to get my stable moved. But first, I had to help Maru with some mathematical problems. I got both the questions right, then freed Prizzy from her prison. And actually, I think I like this new stable spot better anyway. I decided I should probably hand out some gifts to villagers since I didn't have that friendship mod anymore, so all of Robin's household got some fruit. No tomatoes here. And I visited Marnie with a diamond, then came home to destroy the trees around the greenhouse so that it doesn't become a forest. On day 134, I checked out Luna's spouse room because I kind of forgot till now. Looks like she does some fabric craft, but also she has a fridge which looks like it might be blocking something. Hmm. Anyway, I gave her another strawberry, then it was up to Ridgeside to bring Sean a birthday breakfast in bed. I mean, it was just a green bean, but if it's the first thing he ate, then technically- Wait, are those Lewis's shorts? I ignored that and rode back into Pelican Town to pick out a new special request for the week. I do need the Curious Substance one, but I was intrigued about the crab one this week, though honestly, I'm gonna tell you straight up, I didn't finish it. Slaying 50 crabs is a lot, and I am a busy woman, so we'll come back to this again if we need to. The other birthday of the day was Eloise's, but I went into the wrong house and got a cutscene with Ideen, who was having a chat with her cat, and she wasn't exactly happy to see me. I'm sorry, I thought this was a different house. She was having some trouble renting her spare room, and only got one applicant who happened to be a grubby ragabrash, which, looking at her standards, could very much have just been an ordinary fellow. So I told her maybe to be less picky. It wasn't what she wanted to hear, so she told me to leave. I found the right house eventually, and gave Eloise a daffodil. Another friendship complete. I was running low on ores for kegs, so despite the bad luck day today, I mined and I mined and I mined till I passed out down here. On day 135, I gave Andy some pale ale for his birthday, then came back to the mines again for some fibre farming and crab hunting. The copper was a nice bonus too. By the end of the day, I only found a handful of crabs, but got loads of the other stuff I needed. Day 136 was a wine day, and it was also flower dance day. I talked to a few of the NPCs for some friendship points, and asked my wife to dance with me. Then I took my place for what I was gonna say was squat, but looks like I'm doing lunges instead. On day 137, I got 50 Joja Cola in the mail from Andy. I'm not drinking them this time around, nor am I asking how the heck he fit all of them in there, but I'm just gonna ship them and harvest my strawberries. It was a really good luck day, so I went for my first Skull Cabins run of the year. 26 days in and I still haven't been? Criminal. Absolutely criminal. Just like this stupid spiral floor. I didn't get all that much treasure today, but that didn't matter because I was mainly here to slay Pepper Rexes for Freddy. Once I found enough of them, I exited to the desert where I got a cutscene with Sandy. Seems she also knows some magic, given that she lives in Castle Village and the only way to get there is to warp. I got three prizzies today, so I traded for a magic rock candy before I left. On day 138, the travelling merchant finally stopped bringing me batteries. It was a sad day. I helped Shane, Emily and Clint to film a commercial, and he drank enough Joja Blue to match Emily's hair. Then I brought Pierre a rabbit's foot for his birthday, along with that sashimi he asked for by mail. I jumped on the bubble spot at Shearwater Bridge, then did some sunset fishing up at Ridgeside Village, which meant I hit level 9 that night. Day 139 began with the last rhubarb harvest of the year. Then I filled the empty space with forage seeds to hold the sprinkler spots for summer, because I'm not tilling and watering all of these on the first day of the season. I had some ancient fruit ready in the greenhouse which I turned back into seeds. Then I found a rabbit's foot in a chest somewhere, and I know I'd given one as a gift before, so I thought it was about time I donate one to the community centre to complete the enchanters bundle. Five gold bars is a welcome gift, and surprise, I also had the three apples. I didn't care about the heater because we just completed the entire community centre. I just stood and took it in for a minute. Then when I came home to give my wife the good news with a gift, she gave me a star drop. Perfect timing for this sort of gift. I didn't rest there though because I wanted to make some more furnaces to speed up smelting. Then I plucked up every piece of forage I could on my way home which went towards making more spring seeds. On day 140, I collected the final batch of spring forage and replaced them with more seeds to keep the spaces watered. When I rode out to the forest, I got this weird cutscene which actually put me down here. Kinda annoying, but I browsed through the hat mouse shop whilst I was down here. I even bought a couple of things. The tiara doesn't suit me. My horse, however, a glow up. I adore this, keeping it on forever. I took a trip to the desert to pick up the Sunday staircases, then into Sandy's shop to buy a buttload of starfruit seeds, though I was being careful not to spend every penny because I was getting ready for the new season tomorrow. Up at Ridgeside Village, Naomi dragged me to help her get on the cable car because she's kinda terrified of heights. Then I helped a turtle in need because someone trashed the area around Tort's home. Who would do something like this? I helped by cleaning up the area which Tort's was grateful for. Then I got another cutscene where Maeve was ripping into Arya for crying. Once the scary woman left, I told her it's okay to cry. 
She needed to hear it from someone, and even though she wasn't happy about what happened, she at least appeared to be a little relieved to have someone on her side. With all the cutscenes over with, I wanted to grab the last of the spring forage from Ridgeside Village for the year, then I used up any remaining minutes of this day chopping wood in Cindersat Forest. On day 141, I asked Robin to build my first shed, then I was on my way to Pierre's when I got the community centre completion cutscene, and encouraged Pierre to smash Morris and Joja out of existence. I helped the mayor show Josephine around town, then when I finally made it to the shop to buy seeds, I found Luna here too. She just wanted some fruit because she was hungry, but even to my own wife, Pierre still tried to pass off my produce as his own. Not that she seemed to notice. We took a walk together, and she told me she was worried that other people might find her strange if they got to know her. I was also disappointed, though not surprised, to find out the wizard had pretty much told her to isolate herself. She asked what people might think of her, and I think she's a fun and caring person. That was a nice little walk, but these were also a lot of distractions for the first day of the season, so I stopped procrastinating on the seed buying, and got a few of most things to cover for ingredients and stuff, and I did get some melons for a little more cash. I came home and got everything planted, but I placed one of the blueberry seeds wrong so I destroyed it and ran back to Pierre's to replace it. But when I got there I got another freaking cutscene. Pierre seemed to have recognised the governor's wife from somewhere. He seems to think Josephine is the Zuzu songbird, whoever that is, but she categorically denied it then bolted. Whatever. Seeds please. I'm out of here. Annoyingly though, I should have bought more melon seeds when I was there because I miscalculated those by a fair few. Same with the starfruit seeds too, but thankfully Sandy stays open a lot longer. When I got back that night, I realised I forgot to prep the new field during spring, so I raced to get everything tilled, planted and watered, but I ended up passing out in the field, missing out on watering the last few. Not the smoothest start to my second summer. On day 142, I got some spangle seeds in the mail I no longer have the room for. I spent a lot of this day chopping wood in Cindersat Forest, with a brief break to check out the maze at the entrance of the Junimo Woods. But I didn't do it today because I really wanted to focus on the wood chopping, which paid off because I came home with almost two stacks of the stuff. Day 143 was a Wednesday wine day, then I headed up to the train station to get the cave cutscene with the wizard, and get that questline started. I also wanted to try and move my fish pond to this little corner, but I didn't think it was going to end up looking right, so I put it next to the spouse garden instead. I moved the border path there too. I used yesterday's wood to make another 33 kegs, and even more to make 74 tea saplings to sell. I harvested my salal berries from the greenhouse, and look at the sheer quantity of them. Then I placed the new kegs along the side of the path till I decide on a more permanent spot, and for now, they'll be used to make coffee. I decided to keep some salal berries to turn back into seeds for next year. Then, that evening, I took a trip up to Ridgeside Village to deliver three oranges to Bert, and whilst I was there, I found out there were all these recipes for sale at Peekers, so I bought every last one and came home to carry on making shrub seeds. On day 144, another baby dino hatched. The name I went with for this one was Buzz. I gave Jazz a fairy rose for her birthday, then I popped up to Pierre's to buy one of each sapling I didn't have yet. I forgot about the special request this week, so I picked the jelly one because Lewis seemed really angry about it. Plus, it should be easy enough to do. Another thing I forgot to do was get the boat cutscene so I could check on the materials. Wait, why is that trash moving? I agreed to help fix the boat, got my list of materials and went on my way so I could plant my fruit saplings back at home. I then made haste for the secret woods because I was going to need 170 more hardwood to be able to fix that boat, and since I came home to a batch of jelly that evening, I also harvested the fruit from my greenhouse to satisfy that jelly quest. On day 145, I went to hand in the jelly for that quest, and ended up in the wrong place. It wasn't for Ridgeside, I needed to be at the Scarp Inn, but I got this cutscene on arrival. Rosa asked me for help looking for some sort of old trophy, but we found this dusty old journal instead. It used to belong to a Lily Ann Sheridan, whose family owned that abandoned cherry orchard, so this might give us a clue as to what happened over there. Looks like Rosa ran straight off to explore, so I went back to focusing on my quest, and delivered the jelly to the fridge for 6,000 gold. Back on the farm, I remembered mahogany seeds exist, so I got all of those planted for more hardwood, then asked Robin to build me a second shed in that other fenced area which is where I want to put the kegs. I paved over the gap between the sheds, and with the jars now empty, I could move the ones I had into the shed and made another 15, so we were more than double our jelly output. Then it was another night in the secret woods gathering hardwood for that boat. On day 146, I got more jelly and pickles started, even if I didn't have enough to put in every jar. I had some ancient fruit ready in the greenhouse, so I got them turned back into seeds and got them replanted. The greenhouse is officially full! I gathered my daily hardwood before chopping the regular trees in West Indesat for the day, which continued for the whole of day 147. Then on day 148, I harvested the first summer forage of the year, and of course the poppies that grew. 
All of those spots got replaced with more forage seeds. Then I skipped Gus's birthday this year because today was a great luck day and I was feeling some skull caverns. I even had a drink with me from Ridgeside Village that gives both luck and speed. I got a good few treasure floors this day, varying quality, and passed out with over 300 iridium all that night. And look at this, I got another lucky ring. Not that I know what to do with it just yet. I popped up to the mines to drop off yesterday's ores and started smelting some iridium. Then I ran into Maven Sunny up at Ridgeside Village and I was surprised to hear she was actually impressed with what she's heard about the farm. Turns out she was really close with both of my grandparents, like family even, and she even knew about the inheritance so she's been protecting the land until I finally claimed it. Hopefully she might be nicer to me from now on. The real reason I was here was to give Olga a green bean for her birthday. Another friendship complete. I grabbed the summer forage to keep his iridium quality gifts, then stopped in at the ninja house where Gio was glad to see I was alive, I think? I also met someone called Dea who wanted to look at me which was weird, but they asked me to help with some tasks in the forest. I might help one day, but for now I'm still terrified of the place, and this is quite the shopping list, oh my god. I also found some items for trade, but I had nothing they needed, so I left it for now. The Ridgeside bulletin board had a request I could do though. Richard seemed to have lost his glasses somewhere in the hotel. He greeted me when I walked in. What brings me to the hotel? I'm looking for your damn glasses. It took me a minute to find them, but I managed to return them to him that same night. On day 150, I harvested some beautiful looking red cabbages and started a new set of rhubarb wine. After giving Maru a birthday strawberry, I fought a whole bunch of skulls in the quarry hoping for the last dwarf scroll, when I realised I read the wiki completely wrong. This is the list of monsters the scroll doesn't drop from, so I switched to the regular mines instead where I passed out for the night without it. On day 151, I collected my coffee and salal berries from the greenhouse. The berries are giving me a good little profit. I walked to the desert to grab this Thursday's magic rock candy, but this Thursday is a little bit more special because it's also the luau. Of course, I put a purple mushroom in the pot to guarantee an outstanding soup. On day 152, Leah was at my door with that weird sculpture. I got my first fruit from those new exotic fruit trees before running to one side of the map for Faye's birthday, then to the complete opposite end for Lexi's, but I was greeted with a cutscene when I got to East Cup. I accepted a distraction from Jacob, which was to help catch a flock of abandoned chickens, and once they were all rounded up, I brought a birthday cake to Lexi in her cave. The Emperor got a gift today too. I must have been really tired when I recorded this day because I did something really painful. You see, when you play multiple saves at the same time, each with different rules, it's easy to forget what you're doing. If you've not been watching the Wednesday streams, I'm currently doing a challenge where I can only sell things via my trash can, and uh, I think you can see where this is going. No! I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm not resetting the day, I'll live with my mistake, so I moved on by adding a few more preserves jars to the shed. Day 153 began with a birthday breakfast to Alex. Then once again, my birthday gift delivery trip to Ridgeside Village was interrupted with a cutscene. Shanice seemed to have collapsed or something, but she said she was fine, just very tired. But she was also feeling nauseous. Could she be pregnant? They seemed to think she might be, but for some reason, they asked me. Not a medical professional, but a farmer. I wasn't sure what to say at first, but I just said sure, and Lorenzo was freaking out. And that's when I found out they're both just messing with him. Ah uh, yes, even in video games, my neurodivergent brain did not understand the joke until it was out in the open. Thankfully, they managed to clear things up. What a thing to joke about, jeez. Anyway, I got a plate of spaghetti up to Chiara, then made my exit quicker than you can say pasta. Back in Pelican Town, I asked Clint to upgrade my axe, then thought it was about time I gained access to the sewers to meet Krobus, so I could enter the mutant bug lair. I picked up the dark talisman, then headed straight for the train station where I bumped into Marlon up at the graveyard here. I was honoured to be invited to the meetings about local monsters and adventurers and stuff, an offer I couldn't refuse. I got back to opening up that cave then immediately realised I was missing something important. I rushed home to get some void mayo going, completely forgetting you can just fish for it up there. I needed some to cover for shipping anyway, but I made sure to save one for the henchman, which it took him a minute to even notice, but eventually he got out of my way, and once I retrieved the magic ink, I unlocked the ability to build some extra things on the farm, including two new obelisks for these mods. One for Ridgeside Village and one for East Scarp, both of which were cheaper in gold than the others. I had loads of farm chores on day 154. I started by collecting the batteries from the storm, then I worked on harvesting the abundance of crops including all the melons and the starfruit. Well, not all the starfruit because there were still those few that we didn't water in time on the first day of the season, but that's fine, I'm just going to harvest them with the next batch. The melons will be made into jelly and the starfruit into wine. 
some gold quality ones will be kept for gifts, and most of the other stuff will just be sold. Over in the desert, I traded for some warp totems and my Sunday staircases. Then I kept Sandy in business by buying loads more starfruit seeds. But I did also decide on more melons from Pierre too. I handled Flo's birthday up in Ridgeside Village, then I spent the afternoon replanting all of my crops, and even left enough time to start a batch of pale ale from this year's hops. Day 155 started with another batch of forage to turn over before a trip to Clint's to collect my gold axe. I used it to cut down the first mahogany trees that grew on the farm, then it was time for another greenhouse harvest. The ancient fruit went straight back into seeds because I planned to fill up my ginger island farm with these. I cleared out the secret woods again, including some banebury picking, then it was time for another round of jelly. As for where the jam jars used to be, this was the perfect place to store more loot because my chests were getting full and chaotic. Most of what I moved were the modded forageables since there are a lot of them. On day 156, I filled in this bit of path now that the fruit trees had fully grown. I stopped in at the Ridgeside office to visit Lenny, who was going through the paperwork for how much each of the farms were shipping. She was happy with how well Dreamlight Farm was doing, and we had a chat about Lewis and Marnie which had me laughing. Then she told me about her once special someone. She met her at university, but then they took separate paths and had drifted since then. But she is happy working here with Lewis and this village. Speaking of the village, it now had the funds to restore one of the old greenhouses, but they needed my help with the materials. I'll get to it at some point, but for now I was just here for Lenny's birthday and that's her friendship complete. For the rest of the day it was back to the mines because I still didn't have that damn dwarf scroll and I was so relieved to have it drop at midnight, but I still passed out here anyway farming for more coal. Day 157 began with wine day duties, then a visit to Sam's with a birthday gift, but I seem to have walked in on his band practice. They asked me what kind of music I liked, so for this run I went with the cheerful pop music. Sam got an Iridian quality cactus for his birthday, then I helped Gunther clean up the mess in the library so I could get him back to the desk and donate that dwarf scroll. We can officially speak dwarvish. I grabbed the day's lot of hardwood from the secret woods, and now I definitely have enough for the boat, but Willy's is closed for now, so for tonight I just set off a new batch of cheese and mayo and laid paths over this pond area. I had a few more crops to harvest on day 158, then started gathering everything I needed to bring to Ginger Island, and raced straight over to Woody's boat room to deposit all those materials, and in my excitement I completely forgot that the boat won't actually be ready till tomorrow. To keep myself occupied in the meantime, I went adventuring in the Ridgeside Forest for the day, so I could start gathering some artefacts and get to know the place more, but as soon as I saw the big scary long thing, I bottled it. I didn't want to die again, but at least for today I got to donate my first couple of artefacts for the preparations quest. I wanted a calmer evening of foraging, but when I got to my foraging location I found someone called Peepo and an acorn junimo. They were surprised I could see little acorn and he's so freaking cute. Peepo and acorn were looking for a small girl around this trail with dark brown hair and pointy ears. I had no idea what they were talking about, but they sensed her around an hour before midnight. I'll keep my eye out. On my way home, I cut down all the fibre by the cable car because it was becoming a bit of an eyesore for visitors, then I headed to bed so the boat could get fixed. This meant that after tending to the next greenhouse harvest, I could get straight on the boat to head for Ginger Island on day 159, where I wasted no time with grabbing that first golden walnut. I gave it straight to the parrot in the treehouse, and the child reacted by squawking at me which was a sure sign I was going to need a lot more walnuts. I used them to unlock the west side of the island and get that turtle out my way, and whilst I was there I grabbed the war memento so I could do that quest whenever I want. By nightfall I accumulated just enough walnuts to restore the farmhouse, which meant I could set up the first sprinklers. I needed to make sure I could start growing the melon, the wheat and the garlic for the frog. I came prepared. I also planted loads of mixed seeds because these will give me my first pineapples. The quest for walnuts continued on day 160, and this time I wanted to explore the volcano. When I got to the dwarf on the 5th floor, I bought both the recipes, then I carried on through making sure to smash every crate for potential walnuts, and slay every lava lurk for dragon steel. What was amazing is that my only treasure chest of the day dropped the java ring! Unlimited coffee? One of my favourite things in the world. Lance materialised in front of me when I reached the top, giving me some info about the furnace. I collected the reward prizzy, then found out I had enough cinder shards to combine my burglar ring with my hot java ring for all the good monster drops, and I also merged my iridium band with my lucky ring for my perfect ring setup. These are the four I usually like to go with. I returned to the island farm to plant all the taro roots I got in the volcano, then I spent the evening clearing up some more debris. On day 161 I wanted to check on my home farm because I'd been away for a couple of days, but when I got there, I found Lewis waiting at my door to tell me it'll be community day tomorrow. Close behind was Lance, who gave the farm high praise, then left me with his schedule. 
Looks like the farm had quite a queue because the wizard was also here. He asked me to meet him at his tower when I could to learn warp magic. I ignored all that for now because I just wanted to take care of my farm, then spent ages trying to fish for the void salmon because we now had the missing bundle to complete. The second shed was still empty, so I started making more kegs for it, except I ran out of copper, so I used the evening to replenish my supplies. This meant that on day 162, I doubled the amount of kegs I made yesterday and got to start filling the shed. I got a new round of jelly in the original shed and moved one of the jars outside to more easily see when this lot will be done. I can't believe I forgot to do that earlier. I could finally give the dwarf his first birthday gift, but I also needed to browse his wares because he had a recipe and a rare crow I needed. It was then back to Ginger Island to set up more of the farm here because I had some more ancient seeds with me. I was dreading it, but I wanted to tackle that memory game tonight, and it took me quite a number of attempts, but I did it in the end and successfully claimed a few more walnuts. On day 163, I got the bridge to the digs I repaired and cleared everything out hoping for a piece of coal because I forgot to bring a bomb with me. Luckily, it wasn't long before I could craft one, so I set Professor Snail free because I already started collecting fossils. I grabbed all the walnuts from up here and plucked the mushrooms from the cave, then made my first donations to the fossil tent. I wanted to try work through the volcano again today, but I suddenly realised I'd not formally met Leo yet, so I dropped everything to climb straight into the treehouse and get poked by the child. Instead of going back to the volcano, I chopped down trees on the west of the island because I used all my hardwood repairing the boat to get here, and I needed the regular wood for other projects, like adding paths to the island farm to help protect it from weeds. On day 164, I got my first mussel rock walnut, and when I was trying to fish for more walnuts, I caught an octopus. I truly hate these things. I needed a break from fishing, so I panned at the dig site to get the fossilised tail. This gave me the motivation to fish some more to get more walnuts. Then I made a couple more donations to the fossil tent. That's another walnut down. Whilst I was here, I remembered to do the island survey for a couple more walnuts, which I think my husband might be allergic to. <laughs> I then resumed my walnut fishing, but I kept just getting trash. I did get the fossilised spine though. I made my way back to the valley so I could give that octopus to Willy for his birthday. Then I got a cutscene with Jacob and Clint who seemed to be in some sort of argument. Apparently it was family business. Are they brothers or something? I can kind of see the resemblance now. Ew. I shook off that new knowledge and was happy I came back to the farm this day because the next lot of wine was ready, and as you can see, instead of starting a new batch, I'm just picking all the kegs up so that I could place them in the new keg shed the next morning. I didn't have enough room though, so they had to overflow outside and into the fruit cave to make use of that space. I got some starfruit wine going, then covered up all the missing path spaces where the caves used to be, so now this area is completely paved over. I also sneakily accepted Pierre's prime produce on a previous week, and with 25 gold quality hops, I could complete that quest easily. Whilst I was over here, I wanted to blast through that pirate's wife quest, but I got a cutscene at Gus's with Rosa. They were talking about how to improve Rosa's cooking, and Gus suggested I could help provide some ingredients to cook with, and I'll be happy to share. She was also going to help Gus in the kitchen to be able to learn from him. I carried on with Birdie's quest, but when I got to the wizards, I had to drink something weird so I could learn warp magic. I handed the wizard the arctic shard, then it was back to the saloon again with the worm for Willy to get the pirate's locket for Birdie. I wanted that to be the first thing I did on day 166, but I forgot Birdie hides from the rain. I placed the final sprinklers for the island farm, and gave Leo a rabbit's foot for his birthday. Then I tried fishing at the dig site again for more walnuts, but I wasn't having any luck at all. The reason I picked this location is because Stardew Valley expanded adds a lot more fish to the ocean here, and some are super difficult to catch, so I wanted to steer clear for now. Instead, I wasted a stupid amount of time trying to just brute force this puzzle, instead of waiting for the birds to poop out the gems. The aquamarine I did get from a bird, but I wanted to try and guess the rest, and it also didn't help that I didn't bring an emerald with me either. This was literally the rest of my day, and no, I didn't get the walnuts today. On day 167, I harvested all of my taro, which was a relief because I could fix up the paths. I came back to my home farm to grab all of the batteries and free up the lightning rods before handling my last major harvest of the season. To save the spots for fall, I covered the spots with summer seeds now that my main income wasn't coming from tea saplings. That passed a lot of hours, so I thought I should handle the day's birthdays. When I got to Jacob's, I got a cutscene where Jacob was telling Eloise a bedtime story, and he chatted to me about the hardships of single parenting. I told him that he's more than enough, and that he's awesome, and he was super thankful for the support. Then I gave him some cranberries for his birthday, followed by a trip all the way up to Ridgeside Hotel to give Malaya her birthday gift. It was a good thing I checked this pedestal while I was here because I had a load more recipes to buy too. On day 168, I harvested the last few summer crops, with even more to harvest in the greenhouse. 
All that ancient fruit got turned back into seeds, except the gold quality ones which went into completing the missing bundle, which I've been quietly accumulating the items for so that the last Junimo could go on home. I got my first obelisk built today, and for obvious reasons I picked the easy one. The East Scarp obelisk at only 5,000 gold. The materials were easy to get too. This evening was for monster slaying in the Ridgeside Forest because I had hundreds of spiritual essence to gather for the Ridgeside obelisk, and I even passed out there without dying so that's one heck of an improvement. It was the start of fall on day 169, but the first thing I did was make a couple more crystallariums so I could triple the weekly staircases. I knocked back a triple shot so I could be speedier at the field prep, which gave Pierre plenty of time to open his shop for the day, and like previous seasons, I got some of each crop for ingredients and crafting, then any remaining space will be covered in pumpkins. A new season also means a new week, so I accepted a special request to ship 100 bok choys. Should be relatively simple since they grow so quick. I also made sure to pick up a sprinkler's worth of beets from Sandy's, and even though I was caffeinated, it still took me the majority of the day to get everything planted, but I still had a bit of time at the end of the day to chop some more hardwood and add paths to the fruit cave to stop fruit getting in my way. My last order of business though was to unlock the enchanted grove or my nexus, and here is my first warp point which obviously was to the wizard's tower. My nexus was something I really missed when I was doing that Joja run because these dewdrop berries are truly incredible, with plus 2 luck and plus 2 speed, and they last all day. On day 170, I got a mini shipping bin in the mail from Pierre, which I thought would make sense to put by the sheds. I gave Penny a melon for her birthday, dropped some goat's cheese off to Rosa for her experimental cooking, handed over some truffle oil to Lewis, delivered some wine to Lenny, then gifted Zane a dino egg for his birthday. My deliveries weren't over yet though, because I brought Kent that starfruit and a poppy to Trini. Now I was done, so I turned my attention to gathering clams for the eventual beach obelisk. This was only meant to be a quick forage grab on my way to Ginger Island, but I got to Willie's store just as he was leaving. I cannot wait to have that key to the town. Instead, I popped up to the Avengers Guild, where I got this weird greeting, and all it was was that I could make a warp rune up here. Not sure how often I'll use it though, because I already have the minecarts. I checked with Guild for rewards and collected the slime charmer ring, which I probably won't use for a while either. The thing I might use though is my brand new farm warp. On day 171, I ate my first dewdrop berry because it was a max luck day and I was feeling a little Skull Cabins run. I didn't gain anything overly interesting today, but I completed the Rock Crab Monster Slayer goal and passed out for the night with close to 400 iridium ore. On day 172, I smelted some stuff and donated a single bone to the museum for a new reward, which was part of the Sloth Skeleton statue. Here's the story for you. It wasn't until last year that I found out this is actually one of a three part set. I truly thought it was a person or something standing like this. I came home to make some more processing machines, which is perfect timing for our new wine day, but all those kegs were going to have to go outside because my shed still wasn't big enough yet. I used a warp totem to get to the desert to trade for the magic rock candy, then I handled the next satisfying greenhouse harvest. I can't believe it's been over an entire season since I completed the community center, so I didn't want to delay me eating apples any longer. I came to the Aurora Vineyard to check out the plaque I can't read, and the wizard, being the wizard, came to find out what I was up to. The wizard couldn't decipher the Junimo's writing either, and had to call for help from a friend. Camilla let us know that the Junimo has asked for 200 starfruit. Lucky for me, I already prepared this. It's as if I've done this before. We'll have to come back another time to find out what happens next. Overnight, we made some tasty profits from all that starfruit wine, then on day 173, I sensed something happened at Aurora Vineyard, so I headed right over that morning to check out the cellar and meet apples. I did bring a starfruit with me as a gift, but I forgot I can't do this at least till tomorrow, so I set up a chest outside to keep future gifts. I paid Pierre's shop a visit instead to buy all the bok choy seeds I should need for the special request, which I came home to plant having picked the first batch this morning. I checked a pomegranate to Elliot for his birthday, then ignored the other birthday and went to Ginger Island because I needed to show the creepy frog all the crops I'd grown for him. The melon, the wheat, and the garlic, all of which gave me loads more walnuts. With the new season came a horrendous amount of weeds, so I cleared those up and harvested all the crops I didn't want here anymore to make room for planting the remaining starfruit seeds from summer. I also repaired the broken paths and gave that pirate's locket back to Birdie who rewarded me with the fairy dust recipe and even more walnuts. I feel like I gained loads of walnuts this day, but those still weren't enough to get into Mr. Key's secret walnut room. With 25 to go, I wasn't even close, so for this evening, I just focused on setting up spots for the ancient seeds I brought over from home. It then occurred to me that I could repair the beach resort, which gives me access to this side of the island. For now, I left the flute blocks here for a rainy day, then I hunted for all the easy walnuts from this area. To make use of every last second of walnut grinding, I hung out in the volcano till 2am. 
On day 174, I freed the island trader from the cliff face and headed straight back to the volcano for another day of grinding for dragon's teeth and golden walnuts. I was also today years old when I found out you can sell stuff to the dwarf here. Perfect for making room for bombs or other loot. When I reached the top, I used a prizzy I got today to enchant my pickaxe hoping for the powerful enchant, but instead I got swift. This one's a little bit redundant when you already use animation cancelling. I made it through tonight with enough time to make it to the Pirate's Cove because I was here to win a few games of darts for a few more warners. On day 175, I started by smashing muscle rocks on the beach but no new warnuts today. Back in Pelican Town, I handed out coffee to everyone I passed on my way back to the farm where I found Lewis waiting for me, wanting to show me this extra bit of land I can buy to expand into if I wish. It's a no-brainer for me, I'll just have to remember to go to Lewis's to actually do it. Problem is, it was only a matter of seconds for me to forget because I rode straight past Lewis's house on my way to East Cart for Rose's birthday. When I got to this side of town, I got a cutscene. There's a brand new duck in town, the Emperor's girlfriend, and my goodness is she beautiful. A strawberry for Rose's birthday was enough to complete that friendship, and after starting a new batch of jelly, I rode Prizzy over to Aurora Vineyard to give apples a gift. Since I was in West Indusap, I sought out the bear shop to pick up the recipes. Then I got a cutscene in the Junimo Woods where they asked me to make a warp there. This is an enormous relief because I didn't have the patience to navigate the maze to get here the long way. I'll check that out in a second, but first, a trip to the Adventurers Guild to buy another Master Slingshot because I can't find mine anywhere, and also bought some explosive ammo to go with it. Okay, now we can go to the Junimo Woods to check out all the different stores here, with all the fun and interesting things for sale, but tonight was just for browsing. Day 176 began with a bit of a crop harvest, and any freed up spots were replaced with bok choy. Once I cleared out my auto grabbers, I grabbed my first movie tickets because it's Claire's birthday today, but I might as well make use of that ticket to see a movie, so I took a second one to Gunther who agreed to come with me. I was happy to hear Claire and Martin were happier at their new theatre job, but I guess anything beats working for Joja. Then I handed Claire her birthday gift and bought the salmon burger for Gunther. He kinda dozed off during Mysterium, but at the very least he seemed to enjoy his salmon burger so that's something? Hopefully we still got some friendship points for that experience. I passed over some amaranth to Rosa and East Scarp to cook with, and I brought an extra bundle with me for Marnie's cows, but she just seemed to accept it as a gift, so maybe I've already done that quest. Then, when I stopped by her house to see if anyone was home, Shane showed me his blue chickens. I also realised that I was now besties with Marnie, so I headed to her shed to get this cutscene. Her friendship is way more rewarding in the expanded mod, because she teaches you how to make cheese wheels, which makes cheese way more valuable. This is the day that I remembered that I never got the special charm from the Joja truck guy, and I had a slight momentary panic because of course there is no more Joja truck, but then I thought I'd just give this car a try. Seems that Joja truck driver now has a new job. Thank goodness. I thought I missed out. Up at Ridgeside Village, I bumped into Lenny and Zane who were trying to come up with a new village slogan. Then I rode on out to adventure in the Ridge Forest, this time defeating the giant scary serpent. I also found a couple of secret caves this night, the first with a secret shop I don't seem to have unlocked yet, and the other with some decent weapons we can trade spiritual essence for. On day 177, I turned some of the bok choys back into seeds because I somehow didn't have enough, and I wasn't up for waiting for Pierre to open today. I got really lucky with the sunflower seeds from today's harvest, so I got all those replanted. Then I wanted to return to the ninja house when I found Sunny up by the shrine, which I didn't know that much about. He told me how the mountain spirit saved his life once, so now he comes here to give his thanks. Kiwi was waiting for me when I made it up to the ninja house. She was surprised that I could see and understand her, but she didn't seem to trust me yet to be able to become her friend. Hopefully she will come around at some point. A cup of coffee was a good start, then I deposited all the artefacts I got yesterday so now I was over halfway. I wanted to spend another day out in the forest, mainly slaying monsters for essence, but I suddenly became pretty overwhelmed and I didn't feel like dying again, so I found this spirit for another artefact, then I booked it. We met our final goal this evening because I built my second obelisk. I opted for the desert one this time so I don't have to keep trading for warp totems. Day 178 was spent coal farming and iron mining, then on day 179 it was time for a new batch of starfruit wine. I wanted to drop off the materials for Grandpa's shed to Robin, but once again I completely forgot the chest isn't in her house, it's actually in the shed itself, which I suppose does make sense. I cleared up the greenhouse area trees before dealing with my first full harvest on the inside, and I'm really happy with how this full greenhouse looks. It was easy to find Jodie in the town square to give her a birthday gift, that's another friendship down. Then my evening was for turning all that ancient fruit back into seeds ready for Ginger Island, but I did take a minute to go and see Lewis about that farm expansion. Problem is, I couldn't get my brain to figure out where to buy the thing so I left it for now and went beach foraging instead. 
On day 180, my mailbox played a prank on me. Has anyone else had this happen before? I chopped my trees on my way up to Robin's, and as soon as she opened, I asked for a shed upgrade, then kicked back with some breakfast with June at Pika's where he info dumped to me about coffee, and I'm here for it. Funnily enough, the reason I was up here in the first place was for June's birthday, and especially after that conversation, what better birthday gift could I give him than a coffee bean grown on Dreamlight Farm? My next gift stop was to Apple's, where they handed me some old grape juice and asked me to make a warp. This will be infinitely easier than coming out here on horse or foot, and this gives me no excuse to forget about giving Apple's gifts. I also found Sprite Springs today and was introduced to Klaus and Angelica, a couple of forest spirits. They encouraged me to swim across the magical waters, and I picked up all the flowers I could forage, and because these are all forage, they'll be iridium quality, so they'll be perfect for gifts. On day 181, I harvested my crops and flowers, being careful to leave behind at least one fairy rose for the better honey. I was excited to give more starfruit to apples, but I'd already given them two this week, so at least I'm already on top of things. Speaking of gifts, this day was Abigail's birthday, and she got a gold quality pumpkin. With the gifting over with, this rainy day was to be spent in the Ridge Forest because some of the artifacts I needed will only show up in the rain. Thankfully, I tracked them all down, but I forgot to bring back a night black diamond from home, so I retrieved that from my chest and got everything donated. It was a good thing I squeezed this in tonight, because the next step is to wait until tomorrow to come back here, so for now, I got some more iridium smelting. Having finished shipping 100 bok choys last night, I got another mini shipping bin in the mail on day 182. In this moment though, all I cared about was the field full of pumpkins before me. I started by fixing up any decayed spots around the empty sprinklers, then I got to harvesting. Super excited about the size of this harvest. I planted any leftover seeds from the beginning of the season first, then bought hundreds more from Pierre's to get the rest of the field covered. Most of these pumpkins will be kept for juicing, then I didn't want to wait any longer to get back to that ninja house, except when I got there, I was told to wait until after 8pm. Brilliant. I kinda just loitered around the village till then handing out cups of coffee, then I rode straight back up as soon as the clock struck 8. I found this unknown woman up by the shrine. This was the seer, here to cleanse some sort of corruption, and with my apparently interesting aura, I might have been what she needed? I am so confused. Seems she might also know my grandmother, who, until I started playing with Ridgeside Village, doesn't seem to get much of a mention at all, so it was cool to see her included. Belinda summoned a few of her friends, then the seer dumped all the artifacts in a messy pile for her to do her magic. She transformed, and a magic circle thing appeared. This is intense. It suddenly just disappeared though, and a voice came in. This voice had sealed the unstable portal so that it didn't kill us. They had some sort of argument with Belinda. This is all a lot of drama, but apparently that was her beloved, and now we need to unseal her. My next step will be to meet everyone in the Ridge Forest tomorrow. On day 183, I, at long last, remembered to check out the refurbished shed. Has Robin just been waiting in here all this time? You can actually place casks in here, but I haven't decided if that's what I'll use it for yet, and the top floor has even more greenhouse space. I was clearing up a few bits around the farm, and went to get back on my horse, but I accidentally walked to East Scarp instead. Thank goodness there's a minecart just across the bridge. I collected my horse, then rode over to Lewis's to try and figure out that farm expansion again, but it seems Lenny was there for a visit. They asked me to join them for a chat, and Lenny used this opportunity to mess with Lewis as usual. These two are a funny pair. I found the ledger in the end and bought that property deed, then it was up to Robbins to find Lewis and turn it in. With that taken care of, I headed for the Ridge Forest for the next step of preparations, but when I got there, nothing happened. I even tried the ninja house but no luck there either. Well, at least that frees up some time today to go bring Sandy a birthday gift. These are really helping fill those friendships. I also had time to occupy my afternoon and evening mining for even more iron and copper. This will all be used for more kegs. On day 184, I tried the Ridge Forest again, but still no cutscene. I'll have to try and figure this out another day, because I completely forgot the Stardew Valley Fair was this day. I came home briefly to throw some items together, and shove them all in the display. I followed Lewis and judged his judging. Just gotta make sure he wasn't getting bribed. You know, especially at Marnie's stand. I'm watching you. Lewis looked very pleased to announce my winning score of 105. I didn't have anything I really needed here, so I just bought some sunflowers with my tokens, and then remembered there's a place selling food and drinks, so I bought a few drinks before I left. I wasn't passing up on the extra coffee either. On day 185, I collected my truffles before taking a look at my newly owned land. Look at all this room for activities, most of which will be grown more crops. I took a trip to a rainy ginger island to do the mermaid song with the flute blocks, and to check on the farm which had a few crops to harvest, and weeds to destroy, but I also had some seeds with me to expand my ancient fruit crop. 
I brought an emerald with me today to try the gem puzzle again, but I only had the aquamarine drop from a bird again, so I still had three to guess through. It's so hard to track what I'd already done too, so I'll come back another day once I get another bird. To help with this, I used a rain totem that night for more rain tomorrow. On day 106, my star fruit came to fruition on the island farm, then I hunted down the next gem bird to make guessing the others a bit easier. I needed those walnuts, first to repair the farm warp tower, then to finally get access to the secret walnut room. My first key quest will be Danger in the Deep, and considering it's already Thursday, I handled some chores on the home farm, then took straight to the mines because I needed to get all the way to the bottom again, and by the end of the night I reached a checkpoint on floor 25, but I passed out on 26 just for fun. I mined relentlessly through day 187, and with the help of some staircases, I made my way to the bottom the afternoon of day 188. I collected my pale ale and started some pumpkin juice. This should be a decent money day with the jelly as well, but there'll always be room for more so I spent my night chopping wood for more kecks. On day 189, I carefully gave Carmen a birthday gift, making sure I don't accidentally give it to someone else. Even though I caught Carmen in Pelican Town, I still have to go out to Ridgeside to drop off the materials for the greenhouse Lenny wanted to restore. Then this dingus finally figured out the more preparations quest. After days of not getting the cutscene, I figured out I wasn't actually in the Ridge Forest this entire time. It's that next entrance. You can stop screaming at your screens now. I apologised for my extreme lateness, and I had no idea what Belinda was going on about, but I was happy to do my part. There are several of these crystals around the forest, and my next task was to bring items to each of them to restore their magic, specifically items the same colour as the gems. I started with this red one, sharing one of my abundance of salmon berries, but then I checked my journal to find I needed to give 30 of them. There are plenty more where that came from. The other crystals I'll have to come back for, so after a quick trip back to the farm, I returned to the forest with some green and yellow items, except I found this white crystal which I didn't see in my journal. Turns out some of them were separated onto the next page, so I have an extra three to do. Back I went to gather the rest of the items, then I tried again. But I was searching for one of the last crystals and got killed by this big thing. I was so hyper-focused I forgot to keep an eye on my health. I wasn't giving up though. I went back for that last orange crystal, and when I submitted the items the mountain spoke to me and asked me to come back tomorrow. I tried my very best to escape, but I ended up in the hospital again. Don't worry Paula, I'll be going home to bed after this, especially after losing all of my coffee. Bliss came to my door the next morning to tell me I completed the task. I know, the mountains told me, but it sounds like I'll have to go there before 8pm. My greenhouse had some crops to harvest, then I made a few more seed makers to speed up the seed making. Duh, I guess. I used them all immediately to get more ancient seeds. Then I wanted to take a peek at the newly refurbished greenhouse, but the one I went to was still broken and Bliss was here. I think you'll do? What do you mean? Where are you going? Uh. Seems I need to come back one night after midnight. I wanted to ask Marlon to retrieve my coffee for me, but when I got to the Adventurer's Guild he wasn't there. He can't be closed, I need my caffeine back! I did pick up any new Monster Slayer rewards though, so I wasn't coming home empty handed. I made 20 more kegs for my now bigger shed, then thought this path would look better as 3 wide now the farm was expanded, so I ripped up a row. But when I started adding paths to the entrance, it wasn't gonna line up, so I put them all back. That got me past midnight, so I went back to that greenhouse which is magically fixed. I stepped inside to find it looking kinda derelict and a cold chill ran down my spine. A faint voice begged me to stay and some unknown force clung to me. What the heck is going on here? And who is transporting me back home? This is doing me a big old concern. Like, it really did send me into the next day. On day 191, I thought it would be quicker to chop loads of trees with mega bombs, but it really wasn't feeling that way because it took several bombs to knock them down. Thankfully, I still brought my axe with me. I wasn't out there all that long because I also wanted to start planning out sprinklers in the new area of the farm, but I couldn't get that greenhouse from last night out of my head so I went back to take another look but it was broken again and Bliss was back. I can't keep up. I told her about me losing consciousness in there and she reassured me I wasn't in any danger, it's just this structure is stuck between this realm and the spirit one. I'll have to come back again after midnight. I then got a cutscene for the actually fixed greenhouse and it was looking incredible. I had no idea there was even a broken one here, but now I get to share plots with some of the villagers here. The inside was even more amazing than the outside with a cute little seating area and I think this entire side is mine? I bought another one of each sapling from Kimpoi's store and got them planted in that greenhouse so I could eventually have an unlimited supply of these fruit whenever I want. Marlon was back at work today so I asked him to retrieve my triple shots, then caught Maddie on her way back home from Ginger Island with a birthday gift. Now that it was the evening, I could ride back to Ridgeside for the next step of preparations. 
Belinda opened the portal again, and something went differently this time. It seemed to be working. The portal went away again, but this time I heard some boulders crumbling. We followed the seer to meet Ray Riala. She is the mountain spirit who's been keeping the land fertile so we can grow all those crops that we grow. She took us to some pedestals, and whatever they did before involved my grandmother, who managed to contain a corruption just to the ridge forest, but she succumbed to a grave curse in the spirit realm. They've been waiting for me all these years to finish what she started, and my first task will be to gather nine more relics because the ones I took ages gathering before were insufficient. This is going to be a lot of work. On day 192, I got my espressos back in the mail and set off another batch of coffee to make even more. I headed over to the ninja house to read the clues for the blessed artifacts, then realised I still needed to handle George's birthday to complete his friendship and I gave a cup of coffee to Evelyn whilst I was there. I wanted to ask Clint to upgrade my axe, but when I got there he asked me for help. Yeah yeah, I'll fetch your 30 gold bars for your weird commission, but for now, I'd just like to hand in my axe please. When I got home, I wanted to expand my oak resin farm across the top here, but the spots I wanted to plant more trees weren't plantable. I still have space in my keg shed, so I decided to move some of these outside ones in there since the next batch of juice was ready. This contributed to us getting over 170,000 gold that night. On day 193, I found out there's an exit here by the Adventurers Guild into a foresty area with those weird scary void goats. This is in the East Scarp region. We're nearly two years in and I've only just found out about this. That means we missed out on the Spirit's Eve party here last year for no reason. I brought Pam the battery she asked for, then said hi to the wizard who told me some more about Klaus and Angelica. Angelica's actually the crop fairy, and Klaus is responsible for the trees regrowing so quickly, and all the forageables popping up everywhere. I love that they gave these things a story. That made me forget the real reason I was here, but luckily I was still close by when I remembered. I actually came to the wizards to spend about half my gold on the water obelisk. I didn't have the stuff for the island one yet, so this is the next best thing, because at least it will get me to the boat quicker. Apples got another star fruit, and in return, I got a sunflower. Adorable. Then I rode back home to use my new obelisk to speed up my trip to the island. I'm glad I checked on the farm because this was the first big ancient fruit harvest. Sadly, none of them gave me any walnuts today. Speaking of walnuts, I stopped in at the walnut room to get my first reward from Mr. Key's shop, starting with the key to the town. No more locked doors for me. I walked back to the farm for the rest of the day to make more ancient fruit seeds from today's harvest and set up a pathed area for the obelisks. Day 194 began with a very yellow harvest, and it was nice to get into Clint's before he opened to collect my shiny new axe. I couldn't possibly tell you why I checked the travelling cart today because there was nothing I really needed, but that was just a quick stop on my way to give apples another gift. For the rest of the day, I put my Iridium axe to work in West Cinder Sap. I decimated most of the place that day, then made it back to the magical greenhouse for another cutscene. Whatever was here was being held captive for failing a challenge that was apparently now my job to finish. The list was now in my journal, and it's probably the sweet gem berries I'll struggle with the most. On day 195 I stepped outside to all these beautiful pumpkins. All of these are going to go towards more juice. I grabbed some of the last truffles of the year before getting the ectoplasm from the mines in less than an hour after getting there. This is definitely a record for me. Now that it was the afternoon, I used the Scarp Obelisk to warp over there to see what I missed from last year. The Scarp Inn was decorated and looking awesome. I had a look at what Rosa had for sale, and what interested me the most was the pretty spirit torch, but I didn't end up buying it because there was only one for sale. I also found out there's a pool here, so I took a minute to recharge, then chatted with all the attendees, but when I stepped back outside, I got a picnic cutscene with Rosa. What's funny though is because of the event today, some of the NPCs were still in costume. It was a good thing I came, because she trusted me with a recipe of hers. Spirits Eve in Pelican Town was my next up, and you might notice that it's looking a little different from last year. The wonderful thing about Stardew Valley Expanded is that festivals like these change each year, so you aren't doing the same maze every year. Admittedly, this did mean I took the equivalent of an entire in-game day to complete the maze, but I got three golden pumpkins this time. Only trouble is, now I needed to do all of that in reverse. I'll get home eventually. On day 196, I got some hay in the mail from Marnie, which was a welcome gift just before the turn of winter. It was also a Sunday, so I grabbed all the staircases I could and headed into Skull Caverns to do the Skull Cavern Invasion quest on the very last day I could do it. I hit a prehistoric floor with an army of dinosaurs, but instead of skipping it, I stayed to slay them all for the Monster Slayer goal. I hit floor 100 just after 8pm in one piece, and made it all the way down to floor 152 with almost 70 radioactive ore when I passed out that night. Here's the loot review for when I woke up the next morning. Not bad at all, but more importantly, I walked outside to all that winteriness. 
I put in a new batch of juice, and then when I went to see Krobus for their birthday, I had to separate an altercation. Hopefully this horseradish will cheer them up. Somehow, they made it out to the forest lake before I could even exit the sewers, and my wife was there with them, shocked to see a shadow folk out in the open. Obviously, Krobus' first instinct was to run, but then Luna said she was also a shadow folk. What? I'm married to a shadow folk? Or at least she used to be. So this is the ancient magic the wizard was talking about. A spell or something that makes her human. This was all so cool to learn about, until she said she still lives next to the wizard. I thought I was your home. Hopefully, we'll find out more about her secrets in the future, whenever she's ready. This was the day I got round to giving Clint all those gold bars. Then I used a totem to walk to Ginger Island, because a new season means my farm was littered in weeds. I was also here to enchant my axe, and I was looking for the shaving enchant which I got the first time. I used the other prizzy on my pickaxe, which gave me the efficient enchant. Not what I was looking for, I wanted the powerful one. Maybe next time. Perhaps I shouldn't have spent those prismatic shards because Mr. Key was asking for four of them, so I crossed all my fingers and toes that I could find four more this week. With the key gems I did have, I considered something productive like Pierre's missing stock list, but nope, I just want to bring my horse everywhere with me. I will never regret the horse flute, nor would I regret passing out in the mines that night farming for coal. On day 198, I collected loads of radioactive bars I smelted last night and delivered a birthday gift to Jerick, then got a cutscene in one of the hidden caves with Ray Riala who taught me how to make offerings here, and if I bring something good enough, she might tell me a story about the item, or even give me some sort of blessing. I started by offering the triple shot espresso, and for that I got a small blessing, plus one luck is a decent one. I went on the hunt for the new artifacts in the forest, but then I found out they aren't actually here. I'll handle that another day, because right now I just wanted to farm for fibre and mix seeds. On day 199, I had some stuff to drop off at the Amethine residence, but I walked right into a cutscene. Irene wanted some help taste testing a new dish she made. I'm never gonna say no to good food. I thought it was really good, and I think Irene was being hard on herself by saying it was just passable. She made some adjustments, and she was right, it was better. Looks like Irene has a crush on Zane. That's who all this was for. And don't worry, I won't tell anyone. Well, except all of you guys, but you can't say anything, alright? I dropped off everything I had for the charity donation. The eggs and the milk I already had, but it was the wool I was worried about. Let's see if I can pull this off by the end of the season. I came home to chop my mahogany trees and set up the rest of the sprinklers in the new part of the farm. I even finished it up with paths. Winter is the perfect time for decorating, and I found this other secret exit that I can add more paths to. It actually goes quite far up as well all the way up to the bus stop, and when I realised this, I tore some of it up because when you're actually at the bus stop, the paths won't show, so it will be weird if they appear and disappear. For my last bit of decorating of the day, I finished off the obelisk area. On day 200, I set up a second oak resin farm since I couldn't extend my existing one where I wanted it, then added some paths around my orchard to make it look more finished. For the rest of this day, I smashed dust sprites in the mines because of the amount of coal I was burning through. I'd tell you how much I gathered, but I really don't know because I dumped them in my chest quite frequently, and I used a lot of it to smelt more ores too. The morning of day 201 was for starting a new batch of pumpkin juice and harvesting stuff from my greenhouse. I think I forgot about this for a while. I forgot again that the blessed artifacts weren't here, so I spent the entire day riding around the forest still looking for them, and slaying so many monsters. Even without the artifacts, I still needed to gather hundreds of spiritual essence for the ridgeside obelisk. I was doing unbelievably well that night until I got trapped and killed. And the items I lost... Oh, really? Not good. This was a decision to sleep on. But hey, look at all that money! My trip to the forest was so worth it though because on day 202 I built the roadside obelisk. Then I stopped wasting any more time on this great luck day and dived into skull caverns. This wasn't the best of loot days as Skull Caverns tends to go. Like I think that seed maker I got earlier was probably the best thing of the day, and I passed out that night with about 200 iridium ore. On day 203, I refilled some of the staircases I used yesterday, and asked Robin to upgrade my other shed because with more jam jars being made, I was going to need the space soon. It's never too early to start preparing the farm for next year, so I made a buttload of fibre seeds and got to planting. I had nowhere near enough for every spot though. On day 204, I added more fences to my farm whilst waiting for the festival of ice to begin. No distractions this year, I ran straight for the ice hole as soon as the competition started. But this has to be rigged. I caught so many algae, which meant Willy won again. Whatever, I'll get him next year. On day 205, I had more artisan goods to produce, then finished off decoration on the original fruit orchard. All those fences meant I dried up my hardwood supply, so it was off to the secret woods to gather more. 
Apples got another starfruit on my way to the Junimo woods to buy some rare seeds because I'm gonna need them for that haunted greenhouse. I hunted down Sprite Springs again because I was hoping they'd ask me to make a warp, and they did. Now I won't have to search for hours to be able to pick up all this extra forage. On day 206, Camilla appeared at my door to steal me. She wanted to take a look at my nexus first, then took me for my first trip to the Crimson Badlands. This is going to be another very dangerous place to explore, and now I have a warp straight here. I delivered Sebastian a birthday gift directly to his bed before filling more sprinkler spots up with winter forage seeds this time. Clint opened all of the geodes I'd been accumulating because clearly I'd been putting off filling the museum up, but when I went to donate them, I ran into Lewis showing the place to Josephine. Gunther had told her how the last person who worked here made off with the entire collection which I'm working to restore, and once a tour was over, I put all my new stuff on display. It took a couple of trips between Clint's and the museum, but here are all the rewards after opening all those geodes, and I even had enough spare artifacts to share with Gunther. That night I attempted the deep woods again. I still have no idea what I'm doing here, but I was mainly here for all the extra hardwood. On day 207, I could finally call this keg shed full. The leftover ones are just going to be out here for now. I brought some fruit to Kiahi for yet another birthday, then took another look at the clues for the new artifacts and got to work searching for them. Actually following the clues, I managed to get all of them, including the one where I had to stand here for several hours in game and not move an inch. I definitely got distracted though and stood here for way longer than I needed to. On day 208, I rode over to those pedestals to place all the artifacts. The eyes light up to indicate if they're in the right place. It took me a couple of attempts, but I got them in the right place eventually and summoned Rayriala. Together with Belinda and all their friends, they summoned the portal to the spirit realm. Ray taught me through what to expect over there, and basically it's going to be a giant teleport maze. My job will be to extinguish some purple flames that connect to the corruption caused by Gabriella, whoever she is. Off I went into the portal to see what we were dealing with. Ah! The place is crowded with scary monsters, but I got started with extinguishing those flames very, very carefully, and as you can imagine, this was the rest of my day. Mostly anyway. I still left time to give Gunther a birthday gift, even if not a loved one. I was happy to see more juice and jam on day 209, then it was over to Ginger Island to tend to the farm I'd not been to in a while. Look at all that ancient fruit! I set up my seed makers here so I could turn the pineapples and ancient fruit into seeds whilst I got the rest of the sprinkler spots filled out. Now we just wait for the next wool harvest. With the remaining seeds, I came and set up the top floor of Grandpa's shed for maximum ancient fruit. Day 210 was Harvey's birthday, and coffee is best served first thing in the morning. I noticed the Prizzy key quest was still in my journal, so I brought four of them over to that box, but didn't accept a new quest this week. Those Prizzies meant I had enough gems to buy Pierre's missing stock list. I didn't take it to him yet though, because today was a good luck day, so I spent this one in the volcano instead, and this time I asked the parrot to build me a shortcut out of here. I got a couple more walnuts here today, but the treasure was mediocre. The soul sapper ring is completely useless at this point in my opinion. The first thing I did on day 211 was return Pierre's missing stock list, but then it was straight back to Ginger Island again for another day in the volcano, though I didn't stay quite as long today because I got the mummified bat, which I donated but forgot to collect the walnut for. That's because this was the first night at the night market, and I wanted to grab that painting. On day 212, I gave Louis his birthday gift nice and early because I was going back to the spirit realm today, and I didn't know if I'd make it out alive. Thankfully though, after a lot of confusing navigation, I managed to extinguish the last few flames, and I started hearing voices. Whatever I did seems to be working, and Gabriella's grasp on the valley seemed to be slipping away, and she faded, allowing this realm to be transformed into a beautiful paradise. Monster free! I met everyone back in the ridge forest, and Ray confirmed we had in fact removed the corruption, then we heard a mysterious rumble in the distance. That opened access to a forgotten farm at the summit of this area, which we'll now have access to use. We're gonna have our work out with yet more friendships though, because Dea and Geo will now be friend of the NPCs. Romanceable even, I believe. My first stop after this was the ninja house, because now we have more choices for quests. Then I was back on Ginger Island yet again because I'd accepted the island ingredients quest, and this one happened to be for 100 ginger. Why did I do this to myself? It was a juicy start to day 213. <laughs> This was followed by a birthday gift to the wizard, and then I planned to mine for copper for the day, but I suddenly remembered about that greenhouse quest, so I ran to the Junimo woods to buy 10 Hypus Bigro and the other 5 rare seeds I needed. These went straight into the garden space in Grandpa's shed. Hopefully I remember to harvest these next year, then even though I forgot to get yesterday's painting, I still went and picked up the last one of the year. On day 214, my fertilised trees grew, so I added some tappers to them. 
Out at the bus stop, I found Sonny with Louis, who asked me if I had some spare time because him and his friends wanted more friends to play, and I suppose I could spare more time. The other kids were really surprised that I actually came here. I guess my morning is for babysitting a hide and seek game today. I ran off while the kids were hiding to give Freddy a birthday gift, but the first thing he seemed to notice was the quest I completed for him which was to slay 10 pepper X's. To be honest, I completely forgot I had it. From there, I rode up to the forest to look for the new farm entrance, and when I got there, I was shocked at the sheer amount more space we have. Like I'm pretty sure this is a lot bigger than the Ginger Island farm area. I got to work clearing out all the debris, and I used some bombs to help me. Then I started getting sprinklers set up ready for the new year. On day 215, I got a letter from Odd Jobs letting me know I can make upgrades to the new Ridgeside farm, and I got a request from Gus for a coconut. I cut through all the forage I forgot I even planted, which meant I had hundreds more winter seeds I could plant to hold the sprinkler spots. I even had enough to get most of this new area done. After surprising Marlon with a severed rabbit's foot for his birthday, I asked him to recover my cups of coffee because these will make more triple shots than I lost. Then I came home to clear out my hidden mineral cave and start a new batch of jelly. On day 216, I turned all of these coffees into triple shot espressos to keep up my supply. Then I delivered Evelyn a birthday fairy rose. I'm looking forward to having less birthdays to handle next year. Having run out of stone at home, I bought loads more of the stuff from Robin because today I wanted to work on adding paths to the new Ridgeside farm. I spent all day doing this and I'm happy with how it's coming along, but I'm still missing a lot of sprinklers here. The best parts of this farm though are the minecarts that take you straight back to the cable car because screw traversing that forest every single time. On day 217, I went to clear out the auto grabbers to realise the silo was empty. Whoops. I added that hay Marnie gave us last season and scythed all the overgrown grass near the paths. That should take care of it. The greenhouse ancient fruit was ready to go, which meant the ginger island farm was also full of fruit, so I got to work harvesting that. And today I was lucky enough to get two golden walnuts from the mussel rocks on the beach. I did do a quick check for ginger but didn't find any, and to be fair that island ingredients quest was a lost cause at this point anyway, so I left that to go handle Pika's birthday. I'd actually run out of pumpkins for juice at this point, and most of the kegs were still processing wine, so I decided on making loads more coffee whilst waiting for the wine to finish up. I gave a quick check to my garden shed and noticed I still had loads of space to plant, so I had to hop back on the boat to Ginger Island where all my seed makers were to get more ancient seeds made up. On day 218, I accepted Key's kindness for the new week, then walked back home to fill up the remaining space in the shed garden. I used the Look Up Anything mod to help me gather a load of love gifts in my backpack, then I rode around with Prizzy like an early Santa handing out goodies to everyone I could find. All this friendship progress meant I got some cutscenes today, like meeting Jerick's horse and hanging out with Lola while she knits, and after speaking to a lot of people, it was nice to be able to sit with my wife in the saloon for some food and drink. Then we were out on a walk by the forest lake when she looked like she had something important to say. She thought she might be ready to talk about her past until she realised she wasn't just yet. I reassured her that I wasn't rushing her. She can tell me whenever she's ready. Apparently I don't understand, so I just let her know I'm not going anywhere. But then she called me a fool? I'm so confused. Apparently she was feeling better though, so we must have done something right. On day 219, I got right back to gifting the second I woke up. But when I left the farm to hand more out, the wizard stopped me to talk about Luna. I'm surprised he only just figured out I'm with Luna in a romantic sense given we were married months ago and the wizard claims to see everything, but he asked if she's spoken about anything abnormal, so I told him what happened last night. He said it was weird that she hasn't told me anything because she usually gives in to her emotions and just talks about stuff. I'm not sure how I should take this. All the wizard now wanted from me was to tell him if anything unusual happens with her. Doesn't this feel a bit wrong though? Anyways, I carried on with my gifting spree, including to the two ducks, but I took a quick break for an attempt at the Solarian Chronicles with Sam and Sebastian. Having snuck into the back to destroy some weird capsules and healing Sebastian after the others took a hit. Oh yeah, I chose the healer by the way. I finished the scenario with a B rating, which was fine. I handed out my 50th love gift just after 4pm, then it was time for a new batch of ancient fruit wine and melon jelly. I spent most of day 220 grinding for walnuts in the volcano, and my level 9 treasure was 3 golden coconuts. With any remaining time this day, I chopped hardwood trees. On day 221, I returned to the valley to pick up a gift for the Feast of the Winter Star. I avoided the excessive amount of socialising today and tracked down Maddie with her gift of an iridium quality coral. Richard was my gift giver this year and he got me an emerald. After handling Shanice's birthday on day 222, I wanted to get those golden coconuts opened, but Clint wasn't working. I suppose we can cut him some slack on his birthday. No gift for him though. 
I chopped down the stumps in the secret woods before bringing all my mahogany seeds up to the ridgeside farm to plant for more for later. Another batch of forage was done today, meaning I could finish preparing all the sprinklers on the home farm for spring. Then on day 223, there was even more ready for harvest, leaving me with more than enough seeds to spend the entire day preparing the sprinklers on the new ridgeside farm. I definitely hadn't placed anywhere near enough sprinklers to fill out this farm yet though. Day 224 began with the usual of getting any birthdays out of the way. Then it was over to Ginger Island to handle the next fruit harvest, while also making more seeds. I planned to spend most of the daylight hours fishing. I'd accepted the tropical fish quest, and trust me to leave it till the last day to try and do all of it. The only problem is, as you can see by the waters, Stardew Valley Expanded adds a lot of new fish to the ocean here, so it's much harder to just catch those lionfish. Safe to say, I gave up that afternoon, and came home for the final greenhouse harvest of the year. With a couple more farm chores out of the way, it was time for the Ember of Resolutions festival. This is a perfect chance to reflect on our second year here, and I'm pleased to report that we completed every one of our resolutions. As for next year, I'm calling it the Year of the Fish. That's right, we're going for the Master Angler achievement. In fact, can we even go for perfection? Thank you so much for joining me on another year of shenanigans. Please hit like if you made it this far, and subscribe for more 100 days content. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for an incredible offer from HelloFresh too. Thank you again to them for sponsoring the video. Thank you so much to my channel members and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!